Craig here, AEMC Instruments, certified technical trainer. We're talking about fall of potential today. I'm here at our Dover, New Hampshire headquarters, and I've got a ground ring that I'm going to perform a full fall of potential test on. Now, full fall of potential is the most comprehensive yet misunderstood ground resistance test. So today I have our AEMC model 6472 ground resistance test instrument. This instrument is capable of performing several different types of ground resistance testing. Today we're going to use it to test a 15 foot ground ring with four different electrodes installed that are all bonded together. Now this ground ring is already isolated, so I don't have to de-energize and remove it from any type of system that may add some type of influence to our measurement. This instrument can also perform several different other types of tests related to ground testing, including soil resistivity, clamp-on method, and other fall of potential like measurements. Our instruments also ship with fully set kits that have everything in them that you need to complete this type of testing. Today I have a 500 foot reel kit with the optional reel caddies. These are great accessories if you have these very long reels because you won't wear your wrist out having to crank this back in to put it away. It'll keep your reel in good condition and ready to use for your next test. So other accessories that are in the kit, we include four of these auxiliary electrodes. These are going to be used to place either current in the ground or measure voltage or potential at different points in our testing. We also include the jumper cables that allow you to connect your reels to your instrument, as well as connections to the ground system. Now each ground kit will ship with one 30 foot green lead but we also have additional 100 foot green and black leads for longer distance testing, where you may have your ground system located somewhere else that's more difficult to access for your testing needs. The AEMC model 6472 has up to 60 volts of test voltage, as well as up to 250 volts of test current. Now this instrument is unique in the fact that it has so very many test frequencies as well too. Now generally speaking for your everyday testing, you're probably just going to be using the automatic or auto mode for the frequency, but this allows you to customize your test frequency to fit what your needs are. If you're working around a noisy environment, having that automatic test frequency and all those test frequency options could be the difference between producing a good measurement and having a bad day out in the field. So as I mentioned, we've already isolated our ground system that we're going to perform testing on today. And this is about 15 foot in diameter. So it's about 15 foot from one end of the ground ring to the other. Following the rules of follow potential, I need to go 10 times the length or diameter of this ground ring. So I'm gonna take this red lead out and place an electrode in the earth 10 times away. That's going to be my H electrode or red electrode. Its purpose is to inject current into the earth that then we can measure the resistance value between our ground system and our S electrode or the blue electrode. So now that I have installed my H electrode, which is my current injection electrode, 150 feet or 10 times the diameter of my ground ring, I now have to install my measurement electrode. And the first measurement I'm going to take is going to be at 10% or 15 feet away from my ground ring. So I'm going to install my blue electrode, which is the S electrode into the earth about 15 feet away. Now, a lot of questions come into AEMC about the depth of the electrode in the earth. And we're primarily referring to the testing electrodes, not the actual electrodes that are installed in the earth for our ground resistance system. These electrodes can be inserted into the earth as deep as needed. If you have high resistance soil, you may want to insert the electrode a little bit further into the earth so we can cut down on the contact resistance of the electrode. Next, I'm going to connect to the ground system that's under test with the Mueller clip from the green lead and I'm going to plug this right into the instrument. Now our instruments are of course color coded and have all the international designations on their terminals. Let's go ahead and connect the red and the blue 
leads to the instrument so we can begin our measurement. So we've made our connections from our instrument to our reels, to our grounding system, and we're ready to start the first measurement. Fall of potential and full of fall of potential specifically requires a minimum of nine measurements. The reason for that is so we can produce a graph and establish our midpoint measurements, which will be the measurements at 50, 60, and 70% of our H distance. So for today's test, because I have such a short distance to my ground system, I'm very close to it. I'm only going to use the one connection, the green or E connection to the instrument to take my measurement. If I was somewhat far away from this ground system, I could use two leads, both E and ES, and use the four pole setting on my instrument. That builds a Kelvin lead and eliminates the lead resistance from my measurement. Another place that that could be very helpful is if I had a ground system that had a very, very low ohmic value, maybe five ohms or less, because that may change the result of my measurement slightly. So in order to take my first measurement, I'm gonna turn my instrument on to the three pole setting, and I'm going to simply press the start button to start my measurement. So the 6472 can store results for future review, either by our data view software or from the instrument. To store a result, we are simply going to press the memory button. It will pull up a screen to show us our current available memory storage options. We can store in object and test. Here I'm storing a test in object two, test three. To store the result again, I'm going to press the memory button a last time. The result is now stored. Now, depending on the soil that you're testing in, you may end up with a high long push message on the instrument. If this appears, simply press and hold the test button for longer than two seconds and release. If the beeper is enabled on the instrument, you'll hear the instrument beep twice. This allows the instrument to compensate for the high lead resistance of the electrodes that are installed in the earth. Now that we've taken our final measurement, Let's head inside and produce a report. You can find a template report at aemc.com. Under the Resources tab, navigate to Forms. Under Forms, locate the Fall of Potential report in the Excel file. Once downloaded, open it up. Now that we have our form open, fill out the pertinent information. We'll list the test conditions for the soil, the soil type, temperature, as well as the grounding system conditions. We tested a ground ring, so we've notated the longest diagonal distance of the ring or the diameter of the ring. Next, let's enter in our H electrode distance, which automatically populates the correct positions for our S electrode. Now we will enter in the ohmic value associated with each measurement completed. Now that all my data points are entered in, let's verify the accuracy of our measurements. First, the graph looks correct, as I can see a distinctive fall of resistance values along the traverse to H. We're looking for a horizontal S-curve to appear on our visual graph. Next, I can also verify the percent deviation of our midpoint measurements, which are the 50, 60, and 70% measurements we've taken. 
These measurements are within a percent of each other, which means that this meets the requirements of 5% or less for deviation. If you need more information regarding validating your test results, we suggest referencing our Understanding Ground Resistance Workbook at aemc.com or with applicable standards and guidelines like IEEE 81, Motorola R56, or the LPI 175. My effective system resistance is calculated by simply averaging out my midpoint measurements into one system resistance. The effective system resistance of our ground ring is 23.73 ohms. This report is now ready to be submitted for review. I'm Greg, measure up with AEMC Instruments.